Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. We have a very popular uh, topic today, several. But the main topic is deploying IoT applications with uh, Tago IO Kickstarter. Uh, this is part of our webinar series 2024. There's more to come. I'll speak to that at the end of the presentation. But I also have uh, Freddie with me today. Um, I'm David Hall. I am the customer success manager here at Tago IO, and I have Freddie that's just going to field some questions. You'll notice um, that there is a chat. Um, you can ask your questions there, and we'll address those at the end of the webinar. Um, you'll also notice at the top of the chat, I put in my email address and my uh, meeting link, my calendar link. Feel free to schedule a call with me or email me and uh, see how I can help you with your business needs and how Tagayo can help you overall. Um, so with that, let's get started. So today our agenda, you know, introduction to the Kickstarter uh, application. I'll explain what that is. It's very, very popular amongst our customer base. We're going to discuss the overall benefits of Kickstarter, uh, the architecture and integration capabilities, um, installing the Kickstarter application, very easy to do, uh, data visualiz visualization and critical features, uh, CLI and GitHub support, then I'm going to give you a quick live demo. We'll go through that a little bit. But again, um, thank you for joining. If you have questions, please use the chat. Use this time uh, effectively. And as I said, you can always email me or schedule a call with me. Glad to give you a, a more in-depth demo. So introduction to Kickstarter app. What is it? Well, it's easy. It's really an end user application that you own. It's ready to go. And we'll talk about that once we get through the slides here a little bit. Uh, but it's easy, deployable, and ready to go, as I said. Um, can be used to jumpstart any vertical sector use case, whether that's um, agriculture, smart building, industrial, you name it, Kickstarter can, uh, can be your foundation for that. Uh, it's white label supported, and also you can have a, your own custom mobile app, which we'll talk about a here in a little bit uh, with that, or you could just use the Tago IO app. Again, I'll, I'll get into that a little deeper here. So we think of multiple verticals, right? There's agriculture, there's buildings, there's industrial energy, logistics, but, but don't just focus on those, right? It's really anything that you want to do, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be one of those. It could be anything. It could be cold chain. Um, you know, there's lots of different variations that you can do with Kickstarter. And you could even put RTLS on top of it um, to have a different flavor of Kickstarter, if you will, for real-time location sensing, um, whether that's supply chain or whatever that may be. So it's really versatile and it's very customizable. So you're going to hear me say customizable a lot today uh, just because I want to stress that point. And it's the truth. It's very customizable. And as, as I said, it's very popular. As a customer success manager, when I give demos and I show Kickstarter to whether it's customers that have been with us for years and years and years, or it's a new customer or a prospect, it's very they're very intrigued by it because they really don't have to build everything um, by themselves, which you can certainly do with Tago. Um, Tago is used in many, many different ways across the customer base. If we talk about the overall benefits, right, it's really save time and deploy fast. It's that simple, just as it says. It's to save time and deploy fast, right? So what we mean by ready to go, um, it's a full application available from the start, right? So when you download it, and we'll get into that a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, and all that, it's easy to install and start using. Um, the critical features are included. We keep it up to date. Um, with our critical features on the platform itself. So the Kickstarter application inherits those features uh, seamlessly. Uh, it's scalable because, right, it's all about scalability, right, in the IoT space. And really, you have to be able to scale very fast, effectively, and make it really easy for your end users to use. Um, easy to set up sensors. Um, you can even create your own connector. If you have a sensor, uh, you can create your own connector for that sensor through um, your development portal, which I will show you in real time, right, at the development portal. You can customize dashboards for your sensors, for your business needs, for your look and feel. 
Um, <clears throat> your company logo, we'll get into that a little bit and on how you can do that with Togo Run. Um, you can add it to the application in one step, right? You can add your sensors in one step. Your end users can uh, interact with the sensors and add sensors. Again, I'll show you more of that. <clears throat> uh, GitHub code is Git, GitHub code is available, right? It's open source. Uh, it's up to date, as I said, with the latest Togo features, um, pull request and issue support set up through GitHub. Um, it's fully documented. And of course, we are here to help you with anything. Um, there's in-code documentation. So when you download it, there's some documentation in there. It's really nice, too, because it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. But, but you can do it. I'm not a super technical person. I know a little bit. And I was able to do it uh, very easy when this first came out a couple years ago. So it's been around a little while. Um, uh, also, dedicated team to provide support um, in our community. Right. If you don't know, you can go to our uh, website. You can join our community from your Togo IO developer account. You can open up a support ticket if you want, or you could always email me. Um, as I said, for anybody that's just joined and missed a little bit of the uh, beginning of this presentation, we're not very deep into it. But one thing I would like to stress is there's a chat. And in that chat, I put my email address and my calendar link. Feel free to schedule a call with me. Right. And I can give you a more in-depth demo or at least listen to what your business needs are and how Togo can help you. It's very versatile across the board. So when we talk about data visualiz visualization, right, you have a couple examples, very simple examples here. For me, Togo is much more than data visualization. Uh, Togo really goes beyond IoT. And I hear a lot about uh, I hear the word inspire a lot from my customers that I work with on a daily basis, right? And that's really what we're about here at Tago is we wanna inspire you to build something that's really nice and cool and effective um, that meets your business needs and easy to use for your end users. That's the key for me personally, is I don't wanna build something that's super complex that I give to my end users that they're just gonna be frustrated with quite honestly and not use it. Right. So that is really the basis of of Kickstarter and Tago in general, is you want to build something that's very usable for your end users. Right. And again, your end users might be customers that you have or they might be an internal team that you have at your company. It doesn't necessarily have to be an external customer that's using the end user portal Tago run. When you hear me speak about Tago run, that's what I'm speaking about is the end user portal. And we'll get into that a little bit. Another cool thing, very popular, are the custom reports, right? You can schedule uh, schedule the reports. Uh, they can be configured by end users based on administrator rules that you may have. Um, you could have a PDF or a CSV report. You can email it to end users on demand, or you could build a schedule. Um, and that report can contain whatever you want it to be, right? It could be the last reading of 10 sensor alerts or, or you know, the last time uh, that the sensor reported in, battery level, things like that. So there's lots of different things you can do in the report. Again, fully customizable. Uh, it's stored on files on your Togo IO developer account. And there's multiple settings that you can do there. What I see a lot of customers do, they really tend to move towards the PDF and not the CSV report. Because on the PDF report, you know, you could put a nice picture in the background. You could have your logo, you know, really make it customizable for your company and your business. So very effective um, from that standpoint. Looks really cool, too. Very easy to do. So customer setup. Well, let's talk about that quickly, right? Administrators can, can start with two levels of additional access and then register their customers' organizations and their locations and sites, right? Um, you can have organizations and sites. Um, admins can edit uh, their customers' uh, main locations, sites. You can add sites within each organization. Um, you know, you grant access, access appropriately. So if you think about that, if I am a restaurant owner, right, and I have five different restaurants and I have a manager at each one of those restaurants, right, I would create one organization for my restaurant chain. And then underneath there, I would have sites, 
right? And within those sites, based off of the permissions that I've provided, they would only have access to interact with their site. And that interaction depends on permissions. And I'll get into that as well in a little bit later. So custom analytics. I've been in the software industry for years and years and years, and I've always believed in data, right? And you can add advanced analytics to help your users understand what the data really means in the context of your application, right? And to me, um, data doesn't lie, right? The truth is in the data of what is going on, right? Uh, you can keep the, um, the data up to nine years. Um, there's 36 widgets available, which we're constantly building on that. Um, by the way, a lot of people don't know is our roadmap is public online. And you can put in suggestions there. You can vote for things. So if you think that, you know, you see a widget or, or anything, you have a feature idea for Tago, um, you can submit those requests there as well. Or you can just email me. I'd love to talk to you, um, talk to you guys about anything that you may need, uh, just so you understand Tago in depth and what it can really provide. Because honestly, in a 30 to 45 minute webinar, I, I couldn't explain everything to you and really um, enforce the benefits. This webinar will do a good job. This is, as I said at the beginning, this is a very hot topic, right? People love Kickstarter. And I think you will too, once you try it out. So we talked about white label a little bit. But when you think about it, let's just talk about on the far left, what you see is just the generic Tago app, right? The mobile app. But you can customize that without white label. Um, you could change certain things. You could have your logo, change a picture in the background. What you're looking at in this middle um, one here is where it's a sign up page, but that's very customizable, right? Um, a lot of customers, when they do share with what they're doing um, on their application, right, on their Tago Run application, again, the end user application, on their mobile app, they'll put a video in the background of their company, you know, or whatever it is. Very cool to do, very customizable. And of course, you have your maps or whatever your dashboards, your visualization, right? So you can download Tago, the Tago uh, application, the mobile app uh, for free and start using it today. Um, we do build custom mobile apps. Um, for our customers. If you want more um, about that, again, email me or just schedule a call. And I'll be sure to take care of you and get you that information that you may need. So hardware and connectivity, really the backbone of IoT, right? In some respects, right? So right now we have over 500 compatible devices um, that are available to you on the application, right? And we're adding to that all the time. I work with many different manufacturers throughout the IoT industry. So we're constantly adding to that. And, you know, although Tuggle works uh, as with any IoT sensor, we have worked with oh, validated more than 500, as I said, with our partner with our partners. And if you just go to Tago and search for devices, you're going to find the device list there as well. And you see, we have some connectivity, right? You see LoRaWAN, Bluetooth, Sigfox, NBIoT, Wi-Fi. You see a panic button, um, you know, motion detector, so on and so forth. So what I'm stressing here is that, A, there's lots of different sensors. This is just a very minute uh, view into that. And there's more connectivity options that you have here right? Um, whether that's MQTT that you might want to use. Again, there's various options. Could be chirp stack, um, whatever you want, right? Um, we have that connectivity available. And you can even build your own uh, network if you want to. So again, Tago is very open and customizable. So if we talk about the Kickstarter architecture and the integration capability, let's start at the bottom, your sensors and networks, right? You have your sensors and your network support, right? If we go up from that to the Kickstarter modules, you have the PDF report generator that I spoke about briefly, right? You have map and image marker support if you so choose to use it. Again, these you can modify these any way you want, right? Um, you have alert management, whether those alerts, again, are for battery, a door open, door close, maybe somebody's going outside or something, somebody, is going in and out of a geofence, uh, you will get that alert as well. Again, the alerts are pretty much um, anything you want them to be, right? 
uh, device management and grouping users. And you'll see this in my live demo at the end, uh, plan management and organization management. And if you think about your solution logic, right? I spoke about a little bit of these, you know, panic button, freezer monitoring, tracking, water metering, energy metering, water leak. Um, these are all very popular. That's why I put these here. But again, it goes beyond that. It's not just that um, for your Kickstarter application. You could really use it in any way that you like. And then I already spoke about the mobile app and white label applications for you to deploy. Again, very popular. So if we talk about you know options to install the Kickstarter application, we have two options right now, right? And both are very simple to do, right? You can access the easy import tool. You know, you enter your account token. Again, there's instructions on how to do that. Press import, and then you set up deploy um, your run, your toggle run. Again, toggle run, relate that to your end user um, application or their accessibility into what you've built, right? They would they would be accessing your toggle run, and that's where you would build it out, right? Your look and feel, how you want it to, how you want to present it to your customers. And then you have the CLI for developers. Um, install Node.js on your computer, install the Toggle CLI and link to your account, uh, download the analysis from GitHub, or do, just do a pull request to your account. You can initiate your repository using the Toggle CLI as well. Um, upload your scripts to your Toggle IO account using the CLI, you know, and again, set up and deploy. So there's two different options there. Um, as I said, there's documentation to work you through that. But if you have any questions, you could always reach out to me and I can help you with that um, or our support team. Our community is probably best for that because interaction on the community is actually amazing here at Togo. I look at it every day and I see our developers interacting. Um, I see our support team interacting with people. But the coolest part for me is other customers interacting with other customers on the community. It's very powerful. There's some great discussions going on there back and forth on how best to do things or what I'm doing versus what somebody else is doing. There's lots of ideas that get born there in the community. So I highly stress, join the community. It's well worth it. Even if you just want to go there and, and just view for a while and see what's going on, it's well worth it. There's some good stuff in there. So Git, GitHub and community contributions, right? Issue tracking, report bugs and unexpected behaviors is something you can do, right? Pull request. Uh, community can pull request their own code uh, to make the application even better, right? So you can just develop your own code, right? And pull it in with the pull request. Uh, customize your code. You can use uh, uh, fork the code and start applying your own changes right away. Um, within five, 10 minutes, you're going to be off and running. And let's do a live demo here. Let me share my screen quickly. Okay, so what you're looking at here is I am in my Toggle.io developer account, right? And I'm in my Kickstarter account. I have different profiles. You can do different things. Again, I can't get into all this now, so please schedule a demo with me. But I have different um, profiles, so, but you would download Kickstarter to one of your profiles. Right. And your profiles can be used for different things. Right. Again, I won't get into all that, but I think you guys get the idea that there's lots of different things that you can do in different ways with Togo. But when you download Kickstarter, again, keep in mind, I am in the developer account. This is not the end user account by any means. Right. So you're going to see these in real time, but this is where I would build, do my editing um, to really make it really cool and powerful for my end users. Uh, an example of that, let's just look at one of these here, smart agriculture, I'll just choose one. So this is a dashboard that I built, right? And I'm going to show you the, show this to you in the end user application. But this is where you would come and you would edit, you would build, you would add widgets. Uh, you might come here add a widget, you know, there's lots of different things that you can uh, do here. But what I'm getting at here is here's where you could change the look and feel of your application, where you can edit your widgets. By the way, we have a really cool feature right now, which is framer settings. 
you should go read on it or talk to me about it, but you can do, use no blur. There's lots of, lots of things you can do with Toggle. Again, just one example. But when I'm talking about um, your developer account, again, this is where you would add devices, create your analysis, your actions, but you don't want your end users in here doing that, right? This is just, it's very dangerous, right? They could break what you've spent so much time to build, right? So if we talk about Toggle Run, this is where I was talking about, you know, you could change the title. Again, I'm not talking about white label, right? I'm just talking about configuring Toggle Run out of the box, right? Um, you could have a subtitle, your logo, you know, your favicon. And again, you'll notice down here, it says HTTPS masterapp.toggle.run, right? That master app, you could change to company XYZ, you know, the name of your company. Now, if you want light, white label, of course, it removes the toggle run and all references of toggle throughout the application, right? Um, the, here's where you would change your domain. You could set your theme up here. You could put a video, as I mentioned, right? You can change the colors. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do in here, right? Your navigation bars, your pages, your sign-up page. How do you want it to look? Maybe you want to add more fields. Maybe you want your terms and conditions for legal purposes. You can certainly do that. And security and, and protection. By the way, security here at Tago, we take extremely seriously. Um, speaking of security, um, we are ISO 27001 compliant, uh, GDPR. We have servers in Europe and things like that. So very secure. If you, if you, by the way, if you go to our main website, which I'll show you a little bit of this, not necessarily the security part, but I want to show you a few things on our uh, main website at the end of this presentation. Um, you could scroll all the way down to the bottom and, and you could review our security, right? There's a lot of documentation there um, that really shows how seriously we take security here at Tago. But back to Tago Run, you know, you have multi-language, right? You can download a dictionary. You know, out of the box, you get uh, uh, you get uh, Portuguese, French, Spanish, English. Again, a lot of things you can do here, but let's get into the application. So backing up just a little bit, I've downloaded Kickstarter. I've built my uh, dashboards. I've incorporated them into the Kickstarter application. I've customized it the way I want, the look and feel, and now I'm ready to deploy it, right? I can just get the Tago uh, mobile app, as I said, or we can build your own custom mobile app, but you would just take this URL and they would just punch that in, or if they already had their user and account set up, then they would just access the application. And it doesn't have to be on a mobile app. You don't have to use Tago Run, I mean, uh, the Tago mobile app. You can just use any browser, right? Your end users can, right, to interact with it. So let's go there. So this is Kickstarter, right? Now, obviously I've modified mine. I am a super admin, so I can see everything, right? And we'll get into uh, permissions a little more. But one thing I wanna stress when I'm walking you through this is this is just how I did it, right? You can change just about everything. And I mean that literally. You could change just about everything on here to meet your business needs on how you wanna do it. It doesn't have to be this way. So if we talk about admin a little bit, right? I can organization list, very easy to do. So again, I am a super admin. So maybe you don't want somebody, some end user creating organizations. You just wouldn't give them that permission to do that, right? And think of that, I'll get into the visualization permissions as well, but it really depends on who and what you want people to be able to do on your, on your Toggle Run application, right? You just come in here, type the name, you can drag and drop, select your plan. Again, if that's how you choose to use it, you don't have to have plans if you don't want. And you can invite users from here, right? It's really that simple. And then you have your plan management, right? Again, kind of the same idea where you could say, okay, well, this particular one, I want the email usage to be this. SMS usage, push notification, data retention. Again, only the way I did it. There's much, much more you can do here um, if you choose to do, that, do it that way. But one, I think the, the most convenient thing that I find in Kickstarter, and I hear it over and over from my customers, is how end users can add sensors. 
Again, keep in mind, you've done the work on the back end already. And what I mean by that is here I am an end user, right, um, that you've given me access to your application. What you have done in your developer account is you've already predefined what is the network going to be that you know your customers are going to use. And it doesn't have to be one network. You could have multiple here, right? It could be uh, LoRaWAN. It could be whatever, right? Um, this is EveryNet LoRaWAN. It could be Senate, uh, whatever you want. So you can have multiple here. But again, now keeping in the mind frame that I am the end user, right? I'm, you're the developer. You've already done the work on the back end. So I don't need to contact you for me to replace one of my sensors on my freezer or whatever that uh, specific asset is, right? You've already done that work on the back end. And here I can just select what my model is. I see a lot of people, they'll use something in here like their Tectelic or their Dragino leak leak uh, sensor with the model number. Again, I think you guys are starting to get the idea. It's very customizable. Build it how you want, what meets your business needs. But back to my point is I can just click create and boom, I'm done. My sensor is now added um, without having to go through the developer portal, right? And then if we talk about uh, groups, right, like uh, groups of, of sensors, or they could be um, sites, if you will. Again, it just matters on how you want to build it out. And then alerts. Again, very customizable. I just did this one this way. There's lots of other things you can do. But you could say, I want to set up alerts by sensors or by groups, right? Or however you have built your Kickstarter application. You could choose what sensors you want to be able to have an alert uh, for. And again, you've already predetermined, you know, what the model is. What do I want my alerts to be? Temperature, humidity, compressor status, door open, door close. Um, you can have email, uh, push notifications or SMS or all of the above, right? And then you could select your recipients, right? And then you can type the message that you want um, in here. And then what they're going to do is they're going to get alert. I like to use this scenario. And I work with a lot of smart buildings and smart cities and really a lot of different verticals. But right now, there's just been in this influx of smart cities coming to Togo and smart buildings for leak detection. <clears throat> but the scenario I like to use here, I have my Togo app. I have my phone. My phone's sitting on my nightstand at 2 a.m. in the morning. Right. And there is a leak. There's a leak in a, an apartment or a building somewhere. Right. And I am the maintenance technician. Right. Well, in, for the sake of speed and to really um, limit the damage, I get alert on my phone and I can say, oh, apartment 1A has a leak. I open my I open the Togo app, look at the alert and then I go to that and I can interact and close that valve right there from my bedside in the middle of the night. So again, you're saving time, right? And you're saving or you're uh, really helping with damage control, right? And then you can go physically deal with the leak. And that's just one scenario that I'm speaking of here. And then if we talk about reports, right? Again, we kind of spoke about that a little bit, but this is how I've incorporated it into the, my Kickstarter. But again, you can Again, very customizable, right? I told you I was going to say that a lot because it's true. But here I could say, okay, well, I want my report to be active. You know, what time do I want to send it? What days of the week? What are my recipients? And also what's my report content? I see a lot of these, um, a lot of our customers, sorry, not these. I see a lot of our customers say, I want to see all the alerts in the last 24 hours. I don't want to see battery level or anything like that, because I already have an alert set up for that. But I want to see a report, right? This is also heavily used um, for, for to satisfy regular uh, laws and regulations, right? Temperature has to be in a freezer. It has to be kept consistently at a certain level, right? Well, you would just have a report and you could turn that into whoever you need to, to prove that, yes, I have followed all the regulations, right? Just one scenario. That's the idea. And then you could add users right from here, right? And again, as I'm saying, talking about permissions, right? Let's talk about users. You'll notice here 
that there's lots of things, me, myself as a super admin, that I can do and I can manipulate on the platform. Add sensors, add groups, add organizations, customize reports alerts, those types of things. Again, it's based on how you want your users to interact based on permission. Maybe I want somebody to be able to do everything on my Togo run application. Maybe I want somebody in the middle and maybe I want somebody to just read only, right? So permissions are, are used a lot, right? For permission levels, multi-tenancy, how you wanna use that. An example of that is you'll notice here and I'll, I'll show you some of these. I have weather information dashboard. Well, my customer that is interested in weather information is not interested in cold chain. So uh, just through permissions, when he opens his Toggle Run app, he's not gonna see your application, your Kickstarter. He's not gonna see the other applications that you have here, right? Because that's not how I built it out permission wise. So very easy to do. We talk about cold chain a little bit, right? I like, I see these used a lot, right? Like the events, what has happened, right? Again, you can associate this with the report scenario that I gave you as well. Here you have temperature in the truck, right? Heat maps, what's going on in the truck, but this necessarily doesn't have to be a truck. See, where's it been, right? What's all the point that it's been? I could have a geofence to where this particular asset, not necessarily a truck in this scenario, but I work with a lot of rental companies. This is a good scenario, actually. I just thought of this one. I work with a lot of rental companies and they use Togo very wisely and it's very simple to do. What they do is when they rent out a high dollar piece of equipment, think of it as a tractor, right? Or something like that. It could even be uh, you know, a large piece of equipment used um, in construction, right? What they'll do is when they'll give their end user, the renter, right? access to their Togo run app where maybe they could just um, have read only, right? And they could see alerts, but see if that, if the motor's overheating or whatever it is, right? But what they do is they put a geofence around that entire construction uh, site. Just an example, right? Construction site. If that piece of equipment leaves or goes, interacts with that geofence at all, they're going to get alert right away. And they're going to know something might be going on there. I need to check on that. But they know where their equipment is at all times. Again, it doesn't have to be equipment. I work with people in the pet industry that, you know, track their dogs and they don't want their dog going outside of their yard, right? Or outside of the kennel, right? Where they're being housed, those sort of things. So you really have to start expanding your mind when you're thinking about this stuff in IoT, if you're new to it. It's just very powerful in what you can do. And in my opinion, what sets Togo apart um, in some ways, it's, it's again, it's very customizable, but this is the key. You can customize it yourself. You don't have to come to us for professional services to make a change or to build something. You certainly can, and people do all the time. They, you know, for various reasons. They don't have time or they don't have the knowledge of what they want to do. They know what they want to do, but they don't have the knowledge. That's fine. They come to us for professional service, but you don't have to do that. You can build it yourself as you wish right? <clears throat> so again, here I can interact. So again, my scenario is, you know, I think a smart building would be a better scenario, but you can see here, I can interact. I could turn things on and off right through my app on my phone, my browser at home, whatever it may be, right? Another thing I'd like to stress is like here, I can activate or deactivate an alarm, right? And that would register as an action, right? That has been, and that could go also as an alert. Right. And so, and then if you notice here, I have different tabs, right? So I don't want to clutter. This one's a little cluttered. I mean, I like it. It's a little cl cluttered a little bit, right? But now you could separate, you know, so your visualization is really, so your mind looks at it or your end user's mind, it's very easy for them to consume in their thought process of what they're looking at, right? Just an example here, right? And if you look at the building details, again, this one, this one I really, really like. My partner, Tiago, built this. I can't take credit for it. But here, it's very easy to read. Um, it looks cool. We've got an image in the background. But the most important thing is now I've separated everything. So my, my first view of it is not cluttered. If I want to know what's going on in the living room or, or in this particular 
uh, space in the office building or whatever, warehouse, whatever it may be, I can do it all right from here, right? You know, bedroom, I think you guys are starting to get the idea. There's lots of things you can do there. Smart agriculture, also very popular. Again, this is configurable. You could build these any way you want, but here you can even have a picture of whatever that is. It doesn't necessarily have to be a silo. It could be a picture of, you know, your piece of equipment that you're tracking, right? Um, with the identification number. So you know exactly what that a piece of equipment is. Things like that. So there's lots of things that you can do here um, on Tago IO. And then obviously we have industrial monitoring. So again, I'm looking at the end user application, <coughs> excuse me, lots of things you can do here um, with Togo. Let's get into a couple quick things here that I want to, you can take a tour if you're very, very new to Togo, please request a demo. Um, cause I see a lot of people, they start using Togo when I could have really helped them with it. And then they'll contact me. It's like, Hey, I'm not sure how to do this. I could have covered that in a demo. Right. And I could, I can make the demo uh, specifically for what you need. When you email me, say, Hey, I'm interested in X, Y, and Z. I'll just tailor that demo directly to you on how you want to do that. But real quick, let's get into the resources. I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but there's some important information you need to know. So for Kickstarter, you have to have a starter account, which is only $49 a month, or a scale account. You cannot download Kickstarter with um, a free account. But what you can do, which is really cool, is you could download these pre-built templates. <coughs> Excuse me. You could download these pre-built uh, templates, and they're ready to go. You just attach your sensor to it, your device, and you're off and running. And when you download them, you own them. You can do what you like with it. Uh, with that, let me go back real quick. Here's where you can download Kickstarter. And then we have the Learning Center, right? So Learning Center is free. It's extremely popular. People will come in here to learn Togo. And it's in uh, chronological order, meaning I can't have dashboards without devices, right? So the 100 modules are, are fundamentals and the 200s are geared towards uh, developers a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. But these are very popular uh, to use uh, just to get going with Togo. So if I go back here and go back to the presentation real quick, and we'll get to questions here in a second. But basically, how you can start now. I just showed you where to go. Um, this is that you can go to the demo. There's a link here, right? Uh, as I said, you need to subscribe to Starter or Scale Plan and install Kickstarter for free. Access GitHub, join the community, as I spoke about, and supporting tutorials and webinars. Tago is very big on self-help. Obviously, just showed you Learning Center. We have lots of uh, self-help videos, technical webinars, partner webinars. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do there, right? And if you need to know more, as I said, you can go to our website or just email me directly. Glad to help in any way that I can. <clears throat> There's so much more to teach you guys about Tago, and it's really, really powerful that you can do right with Tago. Before I get check, before I go see if there's any questions, I'd like to stress we are doing webinars just about one a month right now, right? Some are technical, most are technical, right? Um, and we do partner webinars. One thing we do about once a quarter, and I don't have the date yet, but if you follow us on LinkedIn, you will get this information, not just about webinars and events that we're attending and what we're doing and what's coming out. Um, I would, A, I would follow us on LinkedIn. I would sign up for a newsletter, right? And I would be on the lookout for our uh, immersive developer training, right? That is hands-on training where we're not, yes, we have some slides, but it's where we're showing you code and how to do things, right? So and you're going to miss those if you're not signed up for LinkedIn, uh, you know, if, if you're not following us on LinkedIn um, or getting our newsletter, right? So in my opinion, those are very powerful for the developers, right, in the group. So let's check and see if we have any questions. Uh, let's see, Frank's asking, uh, Yes, Kickstarter does run on the cloud. Uh, it runs within your application, right? Uh, for example, he's using a 
uh, H3 OPIC, will it run on this platform under Ubuntu? Uh, looks like Freddie's already answered that. Uh, Frank asked another question just for everybody in the room. What code on the gateway and communications with Kickstarter? So on and so forth. I'm sure you all can see this. And he says, our developer says you can use HTTPS or MQTT. So again, can't stress enough. Please email me, um, ask for a demo. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. We have CSMs that can co accommodate different time zones for the most part. But really, let's get started uh, with Kickstarter and get you going on Tago IO in general. Um, and we can help you with any part of that. So with that, as I said, follow us on LinkedIn, sign up for our newsletter. We're always doing cool stuff like this and really get our customers inspired and, and immersed in what we're doing here at Tago IO. But with that, I appreciate everybody's time today. I will see you on the next webinar. By the way, we'll be at some cool events coming up here in the U.S. and abroad. Again, if you follow us on LinkedIn, you're going to see that. Some cool stuff coming up here at Tago IO. So I appreciate it. It was a fun webinar today, and we'll talk to you all soon. Again, email me, schedule a demo. Let's get going. All right. Thank you, everybody.